We speak in night. You're two blocks away and still can't face you, so here we are on the phone again. I want to tell you about the boy I met. I want you to know how I nearly tore myself apart trying to tune his voice into yours. Instead, we run out of things to talk about. I let out a curling laugh, heavy with disappointment. I want you to hang up and not call again. I want to say the right thing. I want the whole of you, not just some. I want you to want me whole, to want me wholesome. I want you to lust me into collapsing pieces. I want us to fuck like the next sunrise depends on it, and the next, and the next, and the next, and, and, and. Moonchild does faith in folks like breath, mouth full of morals since the water broke, back when she first formed from crystals, back when once was now. Now she's learned man's sway, all heels to hell hinged, nothing but unmagic in their veins. Moonchild wonders where all the wonder has gone. Cause she be unseen beauty, lit with sadness these days, and no one can recall her glory, her beehive queendom, or the lion in her lungs, or how, or how from, or when from the sky fell loose change the day that sun boy set her off, spun galaxies between his tongue and teeth, he simmered her star blood into womb water, draped her in orange robes, had her girl giggling. And that's how she was made mortal. So easily did they fall into each other's rhythm, a shadow love, all harps and hunger, all ceremony and sacrifice. The fire for their love burned in his eyes. He moaned as he rose, girl, you gonna be the death of me. But she, being a wild thing, began to crescent and fade, whispered in her wane, this here ain't your story, boy. This dark blue tune, this makeshift joy, these praiseworthy hips and their turning, this soul-washing, home-seeking, dirt-dancing journey in this busted drum still just trying to make music skin. This here is mine, from the dawn of my beginning until the dusk of my end. Yeah. <laughs> on loving him. My dear Jamaica, our love was burning brown and white hot. You were a hope vessel, a national treasure, a suitcase of shadows stretched your dark over my skin like stockings, like sweat. Bet you be bought flesh now. Bet you be fair trade. Bet I got just enough body robbery in my own quadroon veins to recognize that your bed had been made out of old auction block wood. And before it you stood, maroon skinned. Look in your eye like come hither, come taste, test, measure, make yours, said, are you never seen a black man with freckles before I? Do I seem that foreign, my love? I mean, is my love that foreign to you? Does my foreign turn my love for you fetish? Does my white make my flesh fetish for you, my love? Did I fetishize you, my love, mine? Does that turn you possession? Does that sound too colonizer to you? Does your skin hate what your eyes do with my white woman being? Does being with a white woman make your mind hate your hands? Does our love make your body hate itself, my love? Sometimes mine does. My breath, reeking of tourism, my lips and the American they spew, know the commodity they have made of you. Columbus crawled in bed with us centuries ago. Embedded in us is an old tale that lingers in the rum on the mouths of your town. When we raced on bikes up the dirt road and a shrill cry of laughter escaped from my throat, did it look a little too much like white girl on the run from brown boy? Did my chaste turn you predator? Spear in one hand, the other latched onto my fat, 
pulled me across the sand by the thigh. I wonder if your bloodline jumped like rope. If your muscles twitched with the potential for retribution when you split me open like ginnup, bent me into palm leaf, as if you were trying to ask the land to forgive you for this, this sacrilege. I wonder if the love we made was as much an attempt to cast the trauma out to sea for you as it was for me. I wonder if the woman you are with now loves your brown as I did, slow and purposefully, with eager hands and a tongue hushed by history. Wow. So, I'm kind of afraid to do a love poem. Um, I'm afraid that no one wants to hear a love poem. I love, I love that it's, <laughs> I want to hear a love. That's so great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. But I'm, I'm afraid that it's just too small a thing to bring to Spotlight and mic. I've never known love to be worthy of ears, or breath, or utterance. Which is to say, I'm afraid to do a love poem because of the way I was raised. You see, it's all just good business back home, home being a collapsing economy of a concept my father loves with his hands around your throat, bills stuffed between his fingers. And I'm afraid to do a love poem because I'm afraid to memorialize any of the boys who have moaned my name with their hands in their pockets, built me into monument, and then never visited. I'm afraid to do a love poem because I'm afraid the loneliness might break free again. As you can see, it has already eaten me alive. How I have eaten and eaten. I've got this magic trick I do where I double in size just so I'm able to fill the empty space in my bed. And I'm afraid to do a love poem because I've known so little of lust, of touch and be touched and want and hold. I'm terrified of being desirable or even beautiful, because I'm afraid to be left with all the reasons why I'm really alone, like guilt, envy, gluttony, true, ugly. I'm afraid I've known too much of poison, of sludge pumping hearts that know only beat and beat and take and leave and leave me alone and leave and me alone again. I'm afraid I'm hiding. I mean, I'm afraid that I might be hiding from love. I mean, I'm afraid of love, so I'm hiding. I'm afraid love won't want me once he finds me here. In the flesh, here hiding in all this flesh. I'm afraid to do a love poem for fear of being faced with just how little I actually have to fill it with. Wow. up and there's no one in his bed but him. He stuck a finger in my fat to show me there's still not enough room in my body for anyone but me. So here we are in bed, each grabbing at the other with too much and too little self to love anyone at all. Wow. Um, <clears throat> Persephone, time in my hands, my hands seasoned, seen some, seen some shit I have, seen the world chap and crack, seen my good mother whip round in searchings, becoming a she-twister, tried inhaling the whole earth looking for me, but the dirt just stuck to the roof of her mouth. She stood beneath the god of lightning, caked in loss and soot. My tongue was there and gone all at once, you see. Good for the smuggling of seeds, you see. Turned woman once I had my seeds. Had my fill in a fluttering of flesh need. Now I be harvest. Heart, the hardest dead thing. Save for 
the elfin pink lights which bloom inside me like so many bullets. Often I pray. Often I pray all season. Often I pray all season for ugly daughters. <laughs> Uh, so actually, I, I grew up in the Lower East Side. Um, I went to high school down Houston Street and middle school, and my parents owned a hookah lounge on Orchard Street uh, since I was three. I've been bar backing since I was 13. Um, and the, at the hookah lounge, they, we always brought in belly dancers, and they were just the most beautiful, the most beautiful women, the most beautiful demonstration of a woman that I still have ever seen to this day. So um, this is called Belly Dancer. She moves in twirl through the dark, packed tight with New Yorkers in their uniform black, jeweled figure, fire, fluid, covered in gold, bells, tears of candles upon her head. She is hip, is sweaty, Oh, how she bears and balances all that burning. <laughs> um, so, as David mentioned, I just finished doing a one-woman play at New York Live Arts. Um, it wasn't really one woman, it was an ensemble. Um, we each, six poets, wrote 15 minute plays about whatever we wanted and then choreographed dance and just, it was gorgeous, it was a beautiful experience. Um, and my play was uh, called Fat Talk and it was um, about this term body positivity which literally has saved my life. And the entire play was based off of this original poem which I wrote some time ago, um, which is about how I found my sexual freedom through twerking. <laughs> True story. True story. <laughs> she sure as hell turned up last night. Turned up hell. Took hell's crown and flipped her hair. Bent at her hinges, shaking each piece of herself as if she'd been told that that was the trick to getting her wings to bloom back. To bloom black. Cause Lord knows there'd be a holy in her. Holy said, Hell, I want this too. Want the pop and beat, this cake curve, this standing swim, because I've only ever known my body as under. The hands, the lens, the light, the fires that man made. Thought himself half God that day. Remember right that it was a man who made me forget how to feel myself. And hell say, well, sister, you sure was feeling yourself last night. <laughs> Holy say, Feeling myself like hell, huh? You were getting free, getting down and in it. Like you had fully realized freedom, it ain't always upwards. Ain't always up in the north like they taught us, up in the sky. Something us folk don't get till we're over and done with living. Don't let them forget that you're living and alive and whole and hellish. A whole holy hell inside one flesh. Yes, yes. I won't forget myself ever again, cause now I know how to shake free, as long as I own my space with every piece of me. And hell say, and it helps my sister if you feeling fine as hell. <laughs> <laughs>